All right, then we're back. I found this matchbook in the killer's hotel room. It's from the club Alamut. Never heard of it. Is there anything written inside it? No. What were you expecting? If this was a movie, there'd be a clue. A name or an address. That's no use. There aren't even any matches in it. Oh, well. I'll keep it as a souvenir. <laughs> I found this in the killer's room. What is it? A credit card? ID. Thomas Merlin of the Gruber Electronics Corporation. Never heard of him or the company. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh. Well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. <laughs> oh, I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? Not anymore. There was someone. A guy in my final year, but it didn't work out. Neither did my degree. I'm sorry. I'm not. Tell me more about your family. When I was a little girl, I used to spend the winter with my grandfather and grandma. They were the best times. Warm and safe in their tiny cottage. My grandfather rolled cigarettes while grandma made hot chocolate and cakes. One day, he stopped his groaning. He put the lid back on his tobacco jar and took me in his arms. I laughed and wriggled, but he hushed me to be silent. With his unshaven chin all scratchy in my ear, he told me his secret. What did he say? He said, I don't smoke, but she likes to think I do. What a weird old man. Don't call my grandfather weird. He was the nicest guy ever. I wish I was <laughs> back in that cottage instead of this crummy apartment in this noisy city. All right, let's check the scroll, shall we? You're just not going to believe what I found. It's not another part of the clown's costume, is it? It's a medieval manuscript. Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. <coughs> it's incredible. Is this what he took from Plantar? It could be, which means it's worth enough to kill for. Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh, yeah. Maybe they couldn't afford one each. What of it? Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? Their official seal was an image of two knights sharing a horse. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. Let's this see. guy named Hughes de Payne. <coughs> arrived one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim armies. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many the enemy numbered, just where they were. And as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and numbers. They were so rich. Even kings came to them for loans. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. Of course, at the end of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. The last Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. Jeez, so the treasure is hidden, waiting to be discovered? If there ever was a treasure, it's been lost for 600 years. Anyway, we're supposed to be investigating a serial killer, not a medieval treasure trove. But maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Maybe this manuscript is the key. You'd better leave it here for safekeeping. Let's take another look at the manuscript. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. The only mythological bull I know of is the Minotaur, but he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull, even if it was the bottom half. <laughs> What's that object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. There's a guy working on a loom. He's weaving a carpet or a tapestry. 
or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. A knight with a crystal ball. Now, there's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, but it's written in Latin. Per disciplinum mea lux videbis. By something with light. Teachings, you will see the light. You speak Latin. Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Tell me that again. There's a woman <coughs> looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? She made me cry so much when I was a kid, Mom carried me out of the movie theater. She didn't frighten me in the least. Like I said, I was only a kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Oh. There's a woman looking at but the reflection. Okay. Let's face it, we need help, George. Someone who knows about these things. Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones? I know a guy who specializes in medieval studies. His name is Lobino. Huh. <laughs> Some stuffy old fossil who gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. Far from it. Andre isn't stereotypical professor you have in mind. Where can I find this Lobino guy? At the Krone Museum. I'll give you the address. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Oh, no. Don't. Go back. Go back. Look there. There's a whoop at the reflect. Yeah, well. Oh. How do I? A the night through my. How do I? There's the. Well, let me get off. There we go. I have to go. Okay. Don't forget to look for Lobino at the. Oh, to the museum. <clears throat> Where's the museum? Is that it? Yes, that is it. In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! Was it? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. <laughs> Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. <laughs> yeah, we just got to mention that. I just didn't want to talk over the voice acting. <clears throat> I like this game because it has a voice acting in it. I don't have to speak so much and it doesn't... I don't have to kill my voice. <laughs> Oops. I mm, need to leave. Well, so where's the professor guy? Maybe we talk to the guard? Pardon me, oui monsieur? Are you Lobino? Oh no, fancy you mistaking me for him. No, I am the deputy custodian. But Lobino does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it that. He studies here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. The sign on the tripod says it was found at a Templar preceptory. It does? Yeah. It doesn't mention John D. at all. Most remiss. You don't know anything about the tripod, do you? No, I don't. I never had much of a start in life, you see. I owe what little education I gained to my uncle. 
He was an optician, but he also doubled as the village school teacher. He taught me the alphabet. Wait, 19 letters of it. The bottom row of the chart was uh, too small even for him to read. So he left them out. <laughs> Why don't you start over and enroll for adult education? You know, I never thought of that. Do you think? If I studied art and did all my homework, I could be a professor of history? At your age? Dream on. <laughs> Can you give me any further information about the tripod? Certainly, monsieur. It's infamous. That tripod? That belonged to John D. What's the importance of John D's tripod? D was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Udini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. Well, whatever he was, that is the tripod he used in his experiments. What kind of experiments did John D. perform with his tripod? Oh, the usual. Uh, didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. <laughs> Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. <laughs> How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is, well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. And they ask you to park their cars? They ask me to park the... No, no, no! <laughs> they assume. I am an authority on the exhibits in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is, I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. Right. Would you like to shake my hand? Uh, not while I'm on duty, Monsieur. Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? Oh no, I don't frequent places like that. Oh. Thanks for your help. Well, what do I do now? Oh, mighty notebook, tell me what have we found out? <laughs> Travel for the manuscripts in the park. According to the plaque, it was discovered in Lockman, Ireland. Well, I'm guessing we're going to Ireland next then. Are we? I don't know. <laughs> Talk to Nico, see what she has to say. Hi, I've been to the Croon Museum. Did you speak to Labino? No, he wasn't there. Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. Let's take another look at them. Oh, no! Why am I so stupid to, to try to click that every damn time? <laughs> They're between. I hate that you have to go through all of them again before I you can found actually. Tripod. Where? In the museum, it belonged to the Templars. It was dug up in Ireland at a place called Loch Marn. I have heard of Loch Marn. I read an article about the castle. Take a look for yourself. A popular gossip magazine? You read that rubbish? No, I write it. <laughs> Professor Nigel Pegram, excavating the medieval castle at Loch Marn. That's strange. What? He resigned his chair at Durham University in order to devote his time to the excavation. Not only that, but he canceled the filming of a fourth series of his popular television program. 
This site at Loch Marne must be awful important to him. He's a professor of history, Daryl Cuckoo. All the same, I'd like to talk to this Professor Pegram. How do you feel about a trip to Ireland? Disappointed. Huh? That I won't be going. I want to follow up the Belota case. If you really think Pegram's dam is important, why don't you visit Loch Marne? On my own? I'm not so sure about that. Where is Ireland exactly? <laughs> I have to go. Okay, I'll... Alright, so... We're going to Ireland! Excuse me! <coughs> Apologize! Came out of nowhere. I passed the castle on the way into Loch Marne. The castle where Pegram's excavation was located. What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? <laughs> I'm George Stobart, and I'm with the good guys. You're a head case, mister. A few sandwiches short of a picnic. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run. From me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? Oh, sir, he drinks every last penny down his evil throat. And there's me poor old mother, bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chopped firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma, says I. See what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly <laughs> truthful. Compared to him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for altar boy of the year. Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't because he's not here now. But if I sees him, I'll ask him. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? <coughs> Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons. Like in the films. What can you tell me about the castle, McGuire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No. It's locked up. Does anyone live there? No. Only, what do you want to know? Oh, nothing. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? No. What is it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh, yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh, there's a ghost. It's called <laughs> the Phantom of Loch Man. You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I seen it with me very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. I just reached the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worst. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard was full of shadows that could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but my legs had lost their stuffing. Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on my ass, waited while the moon went down. 
Then out he comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I hears this spluttering and splashing and horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why, I fell off the bloody wall. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. <laughs> rational indeed. Anyway, I gotta cut it here, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys later. Bye.